Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I've updated many mods, including Fairmere Space Realism Overhaul itself, Real Fuels, and other such things. Anything I could update to the latest version for 1.0.4 that had any conceivable impact on heating because I wanted to solve that heating problem we saw in the previous episode. I decided not to go with a different design in the hope of circumventing it because I saw in my Soul System colonization series that upgrading the mods did help uh, with the exact same uh, system when it comes to re-entry and that before update the any attempt to re-enter seemed to hit a brick wall and the capsule would suddenly explode whereas after the updates to the mods it worked out better but I'm not entirely sure because for that series I had actually created a completely clean and new install here I'm just deleting the mods out and replacing them with the newer versions. So maybe just updating like that will work, maybe it won't. Um, now I'm not entirely sure I want to just go ahead and uh, go with a repeat of what I did last time right away. So instead of that I'm going to try and launch a probe to Mars. Gonna check out what uh, exactly we have on this all probe. I think I'm going to edit it and make sure it's suited to Mars and we can, uh, it looks like we could, com as long as we don't add more than 10 days, we can complete it in time for this Earth-Mars transfer point and then we can use that to fulfill this contract to get science data from space around Mars so I think we still have a Mars probe that can do that but uh, yeah, we might as well try this. So let me edit this and then we can see what we can do with it. Okay, and while we are building this, we can also build the next crew capsule in the second slot and after we send this out to Mars we're not going to fall, at all, uh, fall along with it we're going to let it go and then we're going to proceed with the launch of the test of the crew capsule so obviously the thing we need here is a, an antenna, a long range antenna, it's got all the sciences but um, it's got the whole re-entry system, we really don't need it to re-enter I don't think we're going to get it back from Mars uh, we're just gonna send it over there. It'd be nice to have the re-entry system just so that I can aero break around Mars and get into orbit. But uh, if that's going to cause a problem once we slap the antenna on, I don't need that. So I'm gonna expect uh, now Mars has I think half the solar input as Earth does. So that's why I'm expecting. But I'll, I'll add some margin to that. Now, this is the only dish that we've got that can possibly do the job, so that's what we're going to slap on there. It sort of does poke out, doesn't it? Maybe maybe we should replace this this thing, this orbital camera. I don't think we really need the orbital camera in this case. Yeah, how much does the orbital camera weigh? 0.03. This is this dish is actually less than that, so that'd be a good swap. So that's all right. Um, looks like power generation on this is alright as long as we keep this portion, but what if we don't keep that portion? We're probably not going to keep that portion, huh? Now we'll put uh, four other solar panels here. It's not going to be enough to run this for very long though. Let's action group the solar panels. So one is the commutrons, two, those solar panels, and these. Three is all the instruments. Four. Oh, uh, parachutes. We. Ooh. Now that you mention it, before it before it runs out of of power, I guess we could land it on Mars, huh? Well, I mean, we need thrusters to slow it down. We could try. We could try landing it on Mars somehow. Maybe we should have thrusters on here instead of these one kilonewton things and try and land it on Mars. Okay, well, on that interesting idea, well, that changes a lot, doesn't it? Um, okay, let's take a look. Main shoot, triple shoot, Mars now. And let's see, this uses hydrazine. Is there any sort of hydrazine thruster we could add to? it radially. Or we could use an SRB. Not very efficient though. Well actually it's probably more efficient than our hydrazine right now. 
Right now we're using hydrazine at 212 ISP. That's a thought. They still stick up beyond the beyond where I want them. No, that's not gonna look very good. Is there any way to get the parachutes strong enough so that they can bear all of this? I mean, Mars has a thin atmosphere, it's tough. We can, of course, also have drogue chutes. Let's put two drogue chutes on. I don't think that'll help necessarily, but I don't know. We'll just send it over, do all the science, and then see what we can do with it. Seems to have enough electric charge. We'll have to be wary of that. All right, and how long? Whoops! How long is it going to take to build this? Ninety-two days. Still in time. Could be enough. Might not be enough. We'll see. Probably we'll need to air break around Mars, in which case it won't have too much time on its battery. Hold on. I I just reconsidered my delta V calculation, so I went to build this, but I don't think I have enough delta V. So let me make some changes to it, try and strip some mass off. I There are a lot of things I don't think we need, so let me edit it again. I think we can dump some of later in particular. The trick here, of course, is that uh, we've got low delta V, uh, not delta V, uh, thrust weight ratio in the second stage here. We are going to use about 1000 meters per second in the third stage in order to complete our orbit. And after that, well we don't have quite as much as I would like. Trick here is that this portion up here can only be five tons. Oh, it's actually over right now. Good thing I checked. Um, so yeah, and I'd like more juice in this stage because this engine is somewhat more efficient. It's got 279 vacuum ISP. We really don't need too much here, but of course this is also used to stabilize the craft anyway. Hmm. I don't know, I thought, uh, I seem to recall this sort of arrangement not working out very well for us anyway. Right? Of course, now the heat situation might be quite different. But this whole idea of attaching a tank directly to it didn't seem like it worked out very nicely. Now, obviously, that means that we have much less fuel to work with here. But hopefully by that time we're not going to be too concerned about that. You never know though. Where's the center of mass on this portion? Pretty high, huh? That's why I had the full ablator. Or not? Wait, 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 wait. I think I see why we had problems with this heat shield. Um, how can increasing ablator... I mean, it definitely increases the mass. You can see the mass going up there. But why does it increase the center of mass? That's there. Adding it increases? Okay. We need a different heat shield. Haha. <laughs> yeah. That sounds very dubious indeed. Unfortunately, that was the only heat shield that was really large enough, huh? Well, I'm going to make a claim and you might think it correct or incorrect but uh, well this has lunar rated heat shield and these are just LEO not rated for lunar returns that's worrying then again if we're talking about Mars I think I can deal with the with the not rated for lunar returns thing because we're not going to be going that fast through the Martian atmosphere and it's going to be pretty thin so, anyway, what I was going to say was, well, we've got the two meter heat shield, so maybe we can just make a two meter, uh, we can just tweak, oh no, we can't tweak scale it up, huh? Oh, uh, well, there goes that idea. Uh, maybe it was just that one, maybe now if I put it on, no, it really is buggy. There's no way that's right. There's a non-RP0 heat shield here. Well, let me buy it anyway. Does it at least have the heat situation, I mean the center mass situation right? This is tweak scalable. 
that's probably why it's not RP0 but look what happens center mass still goes up so probably even if I unlocked one one of these other ones the situation would be the same the center mass would go up with these guys center mass also goes up I think far is maybe far what's causing this it's still nice to have something with a max temperature of 3200 on the bottom of your craft but it's just gonna flip over huh I mean it's got the little thrusters to keep it steady maybe we can move these little guys down a bit oh my but uh... oops okay well that's right now hold on hold on let's keep those off now that center mass is here okay that huh man it's so confusing okay so procedural parts has a problem maybe I don't know okay well at least this seems like a plan of sorts I don't want to block the I don't want to get in the way of the solar panels well that's a bit more delta V probably still need to aero brake at Mars to actually slow down into orbit or landing probably landing but we'll do some science we'll do some science over there that's for sure okay save that save edits okay the next thing I need to tackle is the Astrid 4 and so there's our crew vehicle and I'm not sure I want well I'm not gonna change anything at the top here which is the part that re-entered and had the problem obviously um, I think we could make some improvements the one kilonewton thrusters run on hydrazine whereas this asteroid runs on aerazine and N204 I would really like if we could just unlock aerazine and N204 for the one kilonewton thruster but uh, apparently we can use aerazine and N204 for everything else but not for that hmm. uh, now these weigh 0.015 tons and we've got four of them this weighs 0 0.068 four of these is 0 0.06 this is just 0 0.068 but it delivers much more thrust than these um, if we've got four of these this delivers oh well more than five times that so there's an obvious benefit here in terms of ISP in terms of thrust and mass is good and it has gimbling so there's absolutely no reason to use the one kilonewton thruster especially since we can't configure it to Arizine N204. Right, so let's remove the one kilonewton thrusters. Right? Right. I mean, obviously. Okay, so here's how this works out. We've got the Able Avionics package here, and that carries up to 5 tons. Without the launch tower, this is 4.7 tons, and avionics is fine, though we can't rely on that because that's counting the, cap the pod itself, and we don't have a Kerbal inside. Total life support, 15, well, call it 13 days because of the water. Um, then, if we add the launch tower, we will need to get rid of the launch tower, otherwise this will be over mass, 5.5 tons. But we'll get rid of the launch tower before we move on to the next stage, which has the Agena core here. And there we have an extra 16 tons of capacity and that brings us to 21 tons and so that'll be safe. Is it just me or do we have less Delta V now? Seriously, I think we have less Delta V now somehow. Maybe I'll make this stage, let, let's see what happens when I make this stage smaller. Now we've got some hydrazine here. Maybe we should swap out hydrazine. Uh, the hydrazine is for the thrusters, but maybe we can uh, reduce the amount of hydrazine to, let's say, 80. I'd resize the tank after telling it how much hydrazine to put in. So length, yeah, it goes up tremendously, doesn't it? What's the best that we can get? Seems like the best is if we don't have that at all, huh? Well, that's not an option, really. Yeah, it's uh, safe to say it really doesn't like having the stage on. Uh, let me just take the this off just to make sure that 
You see now, without the launch escape system, it's uh, 13,435. Maybe that makes things better for this stage. Let's see. No, it still takes a bite of our Delta V every time we increase its size. Hmm. Well, looks like we can't make it any bigger. At least we made it more efficient. Let me uh, add some more hydrazine for the thrusters. The worst thing is not being able to maneuver. Okay, well, I guess that's the best situation for us. Minimize the size of the fairing as much as possible. Well, we'll have to be judicious about how we use that stage. It's only a minute and 24 seconds, and it's either on or off. Gonna save that, and we will uh, we'll build one. Okay, well, let's time warp to the Earth to Mars encounter. But actually, we have to time warp to this SOI change for Bilbo. Yeah, so we're going to see about getting into orbit around, uh, not orbit, but the, well, maybe in orbit, but a flyby of Venus. And then we can do that, and then we'll launch our Mars mission. And probably in the next episode, we'll get to the retest of the Asteroid 5 system so that we can see whether my update of the mods had the intended effect. Okay, so do we have communication? Yes we do! Ecstatic cheering in mission control. Yes, we have communication in... well, are we in Venus SOI? Approaching Venus SOI. Okay. We have power. We have a bit of hydrazine. We probably have a tank locked so it's not just 87 meters per second. There we go, we are now in Venus SOI. Periapsis is 705 kilometers. Let's see if we can get into orbit. We're in a good pass for a scanning orbit. We don't have a scanner, I don't think, but, uh, you know, just for science reasons, this is a good orbit. It'll be a day until we get to periapsis. Orbit, well, let's say a high orbit, 1,200. Uh, maybe you could nudge it closer to Venus. That should be good enough. Now how much will it take? Well, about 1,000, let's say. Okay, um... Let us time warp, I guess. Oh, well, I guess we could do some science. Let's do some science. Okay, um... Analyze telemetry. We'll have to wait a bit. And the thermometer. Log. Barometer. Log. Gravioli. Record perturbation data. And micrometeorite detector. Record impact data. Analyze telemetry. Transmit. We get 100% of the value. And same with the temperature. High over Venus. And pressure. And perturbation data. Gravity scan. Let me wait till the previous one transmits. Okay. And. Oh, telemetry analysis is a duplicate. But micrometeorite. Okay. So we've done all the things. Very good. Let us get to periapsis and see if we can do the low over, Ven over Venus stuff. Okay. Still in communication, thankfully. Don't know when Venus itself might block us. Hopefully on the other side. On this side. Let's see. While I still have communication, let's take a look at our line of communication. Okay. It looks like our line back is back that away. There we go. So it should be safe. Venus is not going to block us. Well, it might start blocking us when we get to periapsis, actually, looking at it. 
you can see here the smoke might get in the way hmm well let's do some science now then can we do low over Venus yet this probably isn't low let's see our contract said 5,000 oh Venus flyby perform Venus flyby and receive data has already been completed okay good so contract fulfilled okay let's see if this is low over Venus or still high high over Venus's lowlands well we get some for the gravity scan anyway because it's biome dependent auto saving ah okay but the rest are still high over Venus but we're going to have to stage if I want to let flight computer control it for the burn I don't think I want to but hmm even just turning to retrograde is probably no retrograde probably a bad idea we might be low in a few minutes six minutes or so so let me try to do the experiments again okay let's see if it can turn properly probably not look at how much fuel it's using uh, and it's not trying at all to point at retrograde silly thing sure hope uh, programs on real space probes don't have to go through all of this it is horrible anyway let's queue up the experiments again hope we are low over Venus when they finally happen okay near Venus alright transmit micrometeorite oh no I transmitted uh, something else uh, temperature scan I transmitted transmit telemetry transmit gravity scan yeah, I think I transmitted two things there Hopefully we get both. Uh, okay, there we go. Second thing is going. Okay, micrometeorite's done. And atmospheric pressure. God, look at it, you stupid flight computer. Okay, I'm just going to start the burn now. Okay, so uh, stage. <laughs> it's got to take six, min six minutes. Okay, now I'll unlock this. If I have a signal. Oop. Unlock. We still have communication. I don't know if we have Delta V to get into orbit, especially since it's using so much just to turn. Alright. Full throttle. Maybe Smart ASS will be a little bit more sparing of the RCS fuel, I don't know. Well, we got a lot of science, well, and we fulfilled the contract. 303 science all together right now well we're about to run out of fuel now we haven't made orbit yet and that's the end of it so we did not make orbit let's see where it ended up close but not quite and its final orbit around the sun will be sort of like that okay alright back to the VAB and we are going to try and launch the Mars mission okay so I wanna take a look at our situation before I time warp the 62 days before this Mars probe completes we are still working on Hydrolox engines so it's not like I can queue anything else up in the meantime and I had already checked in the previous episode whether I could do any KSC upgrades and I couldn't I could buy some more upgrade points and speed things along but well I guess well now we have a rate 3 so I guess I guess we can build three rockets at the same time now? No, not yet. But we can speed that one up along, I suppose. I think we should continue to try and speed up R&D. Let me do that. 
to that extent anyway. Let's see. Well, doesn't seem to speed up anything too much. Okay. At this point, it's probably going to be very incremental improvements. We'd have to spend a lot of cash and a lot of upgrade points. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the tech tree later on. Let's just move on with the Mars probe then. Okay, and we'll wait four more days to the Earth to Mars transfer window. Well, let me verify that that's the, the, a good transfer window and alarm clock is not messing with me. I could use Transfer Window Planner, but even that sometimes messes with me. Well, that looks like about the right angle, a little bit closer than usual, but yeah, I guess that's about right. Okay, it says target, yes, 0.25 degrees, excellent. Okay, here we go, throttle up, throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch and launch mind you the Delta V here currently is showing the full first stage and doesn't take into account that we're gonna drop the boosters okay we are definitely past the speed of sound approaching max Q of course, we've seen this rocket launch before, so I guess there's not too much by way of suspense here. Most of the trick will come on Trans Mars injection and whether we can make a good maneuver for that. Oh, I forgot to correct the imbalance in the fuels on the boosters, huh? Yep, okay, set. Keep forgetting to do that. Oh well. Off they go. Now remember, we've got a very slow second stage, so at an even slower third stage, so I'm keeping the pitch high, aimed at the prograde vector, of course, and giving myself a lot of time to apoapsis. Probably this is overdoing it, though. Okay, stage set. And cycling that off. Ignition. Okay, quietest engine ever. Okay, back on with these. With this. Smart ASS. Okay, and I do want to see my stage time in Delta V, Delta v so fairing separation. Okay, okay, we're at the halfway point in this quiet stage, and we are ending up a little bit higher than I wanted. We have now only a tenth of our initial mass. I've deployed the antennae, except for the ones inside this fairing, which it says cannot be deployed while stowed. But yeah, we're going to end up pretty darn high, but so far, so good, I guess. Still got plenty of Delta V to work with. So I looked up this Asterisk engine, this one right here, that I also put on the crude pod. And I'm confused, because this was supposed to be on the Europa rocket, and that's just what the rocket was called, that's not where it was destined for. It's a European system, and it flew in 1969. We, we haven't gotten the engines from 1969 yet. I mean, we haven't even got the RL-10 yet. So this is coming a little bit early. Also, according to Wikipedia anyway, its vacuum ISP was 310. This one only has 292. So its its weight is correct, by the way. But um, it doesn't have the same ISP that it was supposed to have. And it's coming a little bit early. Anyway, I probably shouldn't complain. Maybe, maybe in the updated version of RP0 they've moved it around somewhere. Okay, I'm uh, tuning the main dish to Earth before I forget. Probably a good policy. Got a lot of burning left to do here. Okay, stage set. And 
ignition. Okay, third stage. Hopefully need, I guess, 1,500 of this. And then we'll have enough for uh, trans-Mars injection, but not to make Mars orbit without aerobraking. We would, we will need to aerobrake, definitely. Let me lock the upper portions. Okay, well, we are well past apoapsis and still burning, obviously. Eh, it's still gonna take a while, I think. Still going down and accelerating our downward velocity. I don't know, let me uh, turn on this tank temporarily to see how much total delta we have. 4,700. Uh, hopefully we'll still have 4,000 remaining for Transmars injection. And hopefully we won't have to do too much of a mid-course correction at that. Why does it seem like we have a gross imbalance of kerosene and oxygen? Is that another problem with this stick? Dang it. I need to check all the stages to see that they have the right configuration for for the engine. This doesn't seem to be burning the right amount of kerosene and oxygen at all. Even though this stage has always had that one attached to it, the RD-58. Weird. Okay, we're getting close to the conclusion here. This is going to be a lopsided orbit. I'm going to try and pitch up to limit how much it is, but it's going to be pretty serious. You can see the apoapsis is increasing simultaneously here. Okay, we are positive on the periapsis. We are in space, and I'll shut down with exactly 4,000 delta V to spare. There we go. So, 470 by 168, not great, but let's go with it. Extend solar panels. All the solar panels. And let me plot for Mars. Okay, well, it looks like I've misjudged this. Uh, this transfer window is pretty darn bad. And I can't get a transfer that will hit Mars with less than 4,200 meters per second. I only have 4,000. Actually, I have much less than 4,000. You'll note that we are, well, yeah, uh, let me turn that off. Uh, we've lost 24 meters per second just while I was editing the maneuver. And that is because we have boil off. And our oxygen has boiled off. Possibly while I was time warping on the pad, it even boiled off. I didn't check. Maybe that's why we have the imbalance. Of course, we don't have cryogenic tanks yet. So that's a problem. But yeah, so when I make a maneuver, it's clear that we have actually passed the best time. On the right side we would be burning out of our periapsis, but let's say we burn 3400 for starters. That's not quite right, so you can see I was trying some extreme stuff here. Um, let's just get in line, let's say 3600 is a good number generally speaking. So yeah, let's have it uh, line up like that right in line with the orbit of the Earth. Optimal sort of thing. And you can see that the target position at closest approach is way ahead of us. So that's our problem. Uh, we, we basically waited too long. So actually, alarm clock's indication for when the transfer window to Mars would be was incorrect. We should have gone much sooner. And that's partly because, I think it's because Mars, of course, does not have a per perfectly circular orbit. And uh, so, I guess if it's bulging off further this way, we need to do it sooner. And so we need a larger phase angle. And then I guess if the situation was reversed, we would... Uh, so if uh, Earth was here and Mars was here, and we were trying to hit it over there, we would want a smaller than usual phase angle. I'll try and remember that next time. But the, the long and short of it is, I, I could plot... Uh, you know, some way of hitting Mars like this. Um, for instance, if I did give it enough juice and brought it in, I've tried all this sort of, sort of stuff already, so that's why I know. That is the, oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. So, so yeah, 5,000. Uh, we don't need to go that far. There is a way of getting with less, 
but uh, just in case somebody suggests it, we do have we have MechJeb, and if you uh, think that MechJeb has a better possibility, well, lowest delta V, 4,231. So that's the lowest delta V, and then we'd have to wait for 51 days to depart. And I guess that's so that we hit it at the ascending or de well, whatever node was over there, probably the descending node. Uh, so we'd hit it over there, but unfortunately our fuel would boil off, at least the one, the 1723 we have in this stage. So I'm going to pause it here and think about what to do with this. Maybe we can send it over to the moon to do more science. That was originally the purpose of this probe, was to actually head out to the moon and do these, in, these, uh, these uh, scientific experiments there. So maybe that's a plan. But I want to think about that and maybe, uh, you never know, I could come up with some devious way of hitting Mars after all. So I'll give it some time. But this is the situation. Just a little bit late, basically. But our probe's in orbit, and I will think about what to do about that. And maybe we'll be sending two missions to the moon tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, uh, next time. Uh, this and a new test mission. So that might be a thing. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.